Good morning, good morning, Rabbi Utai. Welcome to Breakfast in the Class. Breakfast in the Class is dedicated in loving memory Shh. of Suri Alfonso Zanzuri, Alam Ashonli Nushmat Suri Ben Clement, the Yulanda, sponsored by Avram Simmons. Breakfast in the Class is also sponsored by Sunny Dora in honor of the Kahal and for the Rifuash Shalema of all those that need a Rifuash Shalema. Dedicated also in loving memory of Mayor Michelle Azerwal, Allah wa shalom, Lilu Nishmat Meir ben Mazal Tob, sponsored uh, by Avidan. The week of Cobra was sponsored by David E. Ash. The week of breakfast in the class is sponsored by Eliana and David Shasha's friends in honor of their wedding. The month of Cobra was dedicated in honor of Rachel Said, Arichut Yamin Vishanim Admi Avesim Shana. And as well, dedicated in loving memory of Ms. Lily Safa, Lilu Nishmat Lea Batchana, Allah Shalom, whose philanthropy has reached so many throughout the entire world. Uh, for those of you who have asked, um, where is Sammy Sutton? I haven't heard him make the joke about Rabbi Charanya in quite some time. Don't worry, he's back. And he just made the joke about Rabbi Charanya uh, once more. Uh, but we love to have him back. Hazak <laughs> Baruch. Okay, my friends, I want to read you a pasuk, a pasuk that without which you would never be able to say this. The pasuk says, Vayar Amonai ki sinua le'ah. And God saw that Sinua Le'ah, that Le'ah was hated. And he opened up her womb. And Rachel was barren. My friends, let's take a look at what this Pasuk means. Is it possible that Le'ah was actually hated? Is that a possibility? Of course not. Uh, the Halakha is a person is not allowed to hate any Jew. Yaakov Avinu is married to Le'ah. She's a tremendous sadeket. There's no way in the world that Yaakov does not love Le'ah. And if you doubt it, I can prove that he loved Le'ah. If you're listening to this on the recording, please do not say Amen. Baruch Atah How can I prove it? Because the Pasuk says, Vayehav Yaakov et Rachel, and Yaakov loved Rachel, Gam mi Le'ah. Also, Mi more than Le'ah, which indicates if it says that he loved Rachel more than Le'ah, what does that mean? It means that he loved Le'ah as well. He just loved Rachel more. Now, can you blame Yaakov? Yaakov fell in love with and decided to marry Le'ah. Comes to work for Rachel. Comes to work for Rachel. Seven years go by. He does the work. He's ready to get married to Rachel. What happens? Lavan switches Rachel for Le'ah. If Yaakov hated Le'ah, what should he have done? Give her a divorce, marry Rachel. Or waited till he had Rachel, got Rachel, you had it in the bag, Yani, and then divorce Le'ah. But Yaakov doesn't do that. But Yaakov et Rachel gami Le'ah. Uh, he, he loved her, but he loved, they loved both. But he loved Rachel, who was the one that he was in love with from the beginning. He loved her more. My friends, <clears throat> says the Pasuk something super interesting. And God saw that Le'ah was hated, even if it means in comparison to. She wasn't loved as much. And God opened up her womb. But Rachel was, was unable to have children. My friends, we see in this Pasuk something unbelievable. Rabbi Rucham Levavetz, the Mashkiach, of Yeshivat Mir used to point out something unbelievable here. He says, what's indicated in the Pasuk here? The fact that Le'ah was hurting. The fact that Le'ah felt bad. So we have a law that says, Ha'elohim yivakesh et ha'nirdath. God looks after the one that's being chased. The one that's downtrodden. Lev nishbar v'nidke. Elohim lo tivzeh. A heart which is downtrodden, which is beaten, which is... Uh, uh, upset, a humbled heart. Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Lotivzeh, he doesn't uh, allow it to come to embarrassment. He gives, he answers the prayers of someone like that. We have, of course, that, Rach- that Le'ah was given children early. She- Hashem opened her womb, even though all the other imahot were akarot. With regards to Le'ah, Hashem opened up her womb. Why? Because she was hated. I want to point out two things. Number one, in order for someone to feel bad, it doesn't take hatred. 
It just takes the feeling that I'm loved less. Now, we're not married to two wives, but we have more than one child. And a lot of times, if you're honest, and I always hate this question, I asked parents, I was like, who's your favorite child? And you could see their eyes like go like this. And they're like, I don't have a favorite child. I love all my children the same. I'm like, liar! <laughs> you were looking up there, you, you knew exactly which one. You know what the funny thing is? <laughs> a lot of times you could ask a spouse who the other spouse's favorite kid is. And they're like, I don't have a You're like, what are you talking about? Of course you love the, you take him with you to the office, you invest in him, you have your, your private dinners with that guy, right? So the spouses sometimes will tell you. The fact that the kids feel that you have a favorite, it doesn't mean anything. Because all the kids have an idea that the other one is the favorite, etc., etc. Maybe the kids are not honest brokers of that conversation. But with a spouse, a lot of times, or if you're honest with yourself, sometimes a person has a child that they, I don't want to say love more. But the kid's easier, easier to get along with. Easier, fits more in your path, and more similar to you, use whichever words you like. <clears throat> the pasuk over here says that to feel loved but loved less is to feel not loved at all. The first lesson that we're learning here. Because one pasuk says, right? He loves them both, but he loves Rachel more. And then the other pasuk says, Bayar Amunai ki sinu and God saw that Leah was hated. That means that God is defining the love that Leah is receiving, this deficient or not the same as love, as, as hatred. My friends, often we don't understand the way our feelings are being interpreted in the story of another. And one of the difficult things about life in general you know, our rabbis tell us, en la dayan ila masha en avraot. Very interesting law. A dayan, a judge can only rule al masha en avraot, what he sees. Sometimes a judge is ruling on a case, they don't know the ins and outs of the case. They know what's being brought in front of them. Imagine one of the people tells a story, and the other person tells his side of the story, but he forgets one of the details that he was supposed to say. The dayan is going to rule on what the story that he heard. He wasn't there. But I always think whenever I learn that, that idea from Chazal, in la dayan ila masha in avro'ot, I always think that I wish Chazal would have added one or two words to the end of that. A judge can only rule on what he sees. And I, wanted, I wish they would have just wrote two more words. Vikulanu dayanim. And all of us are judges. In la dayan ila masha in avro'ot. You're judging all the time. You're judging people. You're judging what to do. You're judging situations. And the only thing you can uh, formulate your opinion on, a matter based on, is what you're seeing. But you're only ever seeing life from your own perspective. So you're making decisions based on what I think they want, what I think they need. What I think my love feels like to them. What I think my criticism sounds like to them. But your criticism sounds very different to them. And the love that you're showing feels very different to them. So whereas from the perspective of Yaakov, et Yaakov et Rachel I love them both, but he loved Rachel more. From the perspective of Le'ah, says Rabbi Yeruchim, Le'a's own eyes. This is her level of perception of what's going on. And why did Yaakov not change that? Perhaps because ki en la dayan ila masha en avro'ot. However, Rav Yeruchim takes it one step further. And this gives me goosebumps whenever I learn it. It says, and Hashem opened up Le'a's womb. Rachel Akara and Rachel was unable to have children. So normally you read that Pasuk and you think, okay, we're dealing with the fact that Leah overcame her infertility because 
Hashem saw that she was suffering, so he helped her out, he opened her womb, he allowed her to have children. So therefore the Pasuk segues to the other wife, to Rachel, and it says, Mirachel Akara. Says of Yerucham, the Torah is much more exacting than that. It would not have put these things together if they didn't have a connection. Why was Rachel Akara? Because Le'ah was hated. And the rabbi says something which is, again, he sends shivers up and down a person's spine. Is it Rachel's fault that this is the situation? No. If anything, Rachel acted above and beyond the call of duty to be able to give over the simanim, the signs to Le'ah. She didn't create this deception where her father dressed up Le'ah as if she was Rachel, sold her, so to speak, gave it to Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov thinks he's marrying Rachel, turns out in the morning, oh, it's Le'ah. Rachel had no part, so to speak, in bringing that to bear. If anything, she smoothed the road for, for Le'ah by giving her the simanim. <clears throat> and later on in their story, when Rachel is being chastised by Le'ah, how are you doing this to me? You're going to take my dudaim like you took my husband? Rachel should have said to her on the spot, are you kidding me? Your husband? <clears throat> Without me, you wouldn't be here at all. You took my husband. And the Chachamim explain that the reason why Rachel did not respond that way is because she had never let Le'ah understand that that was not always the plan. Because she knew that would hurt her sister's feelings. So she doesn't, she doesn't engage. She doesn't speak. And even when she's pushed to the brink, which is always when we answer back, when someone attacks us, and you're like, what? I was going to keep my mouth shut, but now Rachel is still quiet. <clears throat> Teaches Rabbeinu Yerucham, unbelievable. He says, that is the power of a person's hurt feelings. The way he described, the way he and others describe in other places is that Ben Adam Nechavero, relationship between a person, between people, are like a fire. If you stick your hand in the fire, but you didn't intend to, but it wasn't your fault, what happens to your hand? You get burnt. How about if someone else shoves you in the fire? What happens? You still get burnt. When someone is in pain, when someone is hurt because of you, even if it's not your fault, literally there's hell to pay. Says the Pasuk, and God sees that Le'ah is hated, He opens up et rachma, her womb, v'rachel akara. Wow! Because of this. You know, I remember thinking to myself uh, that maybe that's the pshat in the pasuk when it says, and Yaakov loved et Rachel gam mile'ah. It doesn't mean that he loved Rachel gam mile'ah more than Le'ah. It means that he had his, Rachel, his love for Rachel from before. But from the way she dealt with Le'ah, from the kindness, the softness, the sensitivity that he saw in her, Mi Le'ah, from the way that she dealt with that situation, he added more love for Rachel. So it doesn't even mean to say that he loved Rachel more than Le'ah. It just means to say that he loved her even more than he loved her before. Mi Le'ah, from seeing the kindness and the Midot that she had in that situation. Something which he never got to see the other way around because it was never, the story didn't play out that way. And my friends, sometimes I think that that's part of the way we love when we love perhaps in different measures, different children. Or in different measures, different friends. You know, you meet a friend at a difficult time in your life and they're there for you. You'll always remember that when you didn't have the money, that friend lent you the money and with that money you bought your house. Now you have another friend. He met you 10 minutes after that point. The guy would take a bullet for you. But you know what? 
Thank God, no one ever shot a gun at you. There was no bullets to be taken. You never bought another house. You already had a house. He never got to lend you that money, which he would have in a heartbeat. Your friendship with the other friend or with the other brother is always going to be in another place because of the way things played out. Maybe the other person, the other brother would have done the same. doesn't matter. Because that's not the way the circumstances unfolded. Perhaps Le'ah would have done the same for Rachel. And then it would say, Ve'ye'ehav Yaakov et Le'ah gam mi Rachel. But it didn't play out that way. And Le'ah was not second. And Le'ah was not second with children. So she needed to trade for Dudaim and keep her mouth shut. Didn't work that way. Sometimes we don't realize that it's not a child's fault that the circumstances are different. It's not a child's fault that you had the child when you were much older. What did I do? Literally nothing. You made me when you were 40, I don't know. Now you have no patience because you're already older. It's not my fault. You understand? You can't blame a person for situations. An older brother that helps a brother because he's further along in life. Younger brother can't help because he's only newly married, doesn't have the capital to be able to loan, to save. Oh, that's the, that's the brother, that's the one. That's the friend. That's just a situation. But in la dayan ila masha enav ro'ot, we only have eyes that see what we see, and sometimes we don't actually see what's really going on. We don't really see people for who they are. We don't see those people interacting with us through their own eyes. We see them interacting with us through our eyes. How often do you hear people say, I can't believe she did that after all that I did for her. And I'm say, I always want to say to them, you know, maybe that's why she is the way she is. Maybe seeing you, she invites the other one, she doesn't invite me. Maybe that's why. I did so much for her, I lent them the thing, I saved her, I picked her up, she was nothing without me. Who wants to remember their nothing without somebody else? So from your perspective, it's a matter of hakarat atom. She invites the other sister, the other sister didn't help her. Correct, that's why she's not embarrassed to look in her eyes. Seeing it from someone else's perspective sometimes changes the story 180 degrees. Exactly the opposite from what you might have, from what you might have thought. And I want to end with this one piece. You know, in, in the great twist of irony, the Chafetz Chaim um, would travel from city to city to sell his farim. And the reason why I call that a great twist of irony is because what was the Chafetz Chaim famous for teaching about? Lashonara, right? His book comes from the name. Why was he called the Hafez Chaim? Because that was the name of his book. Rav Yisrael Meir Kegin HaKohen. Right? But why was that the name of his book? Because the Pasuk says, Mi Ha'ish Hafez Chaim. Who's a person who wants life? Right? Ohev Yamim Lerotov. He loves to see good days. What does that person need to do if they want good days, if they want long days, if they want life? Nitzor l'shonecha mera. Protect your tongue, right, from evil. So the pasuk is the name of the book. Chafetz Chaim, you want life. This is how you stay away from l'shonara. So he would go around selling his books from city to city. Why is it so ironic? Because one of the pasukim that describes a ba'al lashon hara is lo telech rachil ba'amecha, which means should not be a traveling salesman, a peddler. And the rabbis explain that verse to mean where you buy some gossip from this guy. Oh, what'd you hear about the guy? What'd you hear about him? And you tell me. And then I go to this guy. You don't know what he said you about this guy. So I'm buying from one, selling to the other. Traveling peddler. The irony of the chafetz chaim being a Rachil, a traveling salesman, selling his book, which says, Lotelech Rachil, 
You should not be a traveling salesman. You should not be lost on any of us. But this is how he made his life. He had no money. And he only worked exactly long enough to be able to sustain himself for the immediate future. In his store, as soon as they had enough money to eat that day, they closed the store. And he went back to learn Torah. He didn't even make enough money for tomorrow. Tomorrow, Hashem will provide for tomorrow. Tremendous emunah. Zero money. Anyway, so he's traveling from city to city. Each city, you can imagine, is, uh, represents a lot of parnasah for the rabbi. He needs to sell the books. Anyway, he's taking a journey to a city to sell his books. He gets off the wagon uh, outside of the city because he sees the sun is setting. They do a stop. I'm guessing the rabbi probably was praying mincha. Something happened. The wagon driver forgets the passenger on the side of the road and leaves without him. Now the rabbi has his books in the carriage, right? He walks all the way from where the carriage stopped. He walks all the way to the city. He asks around, where's the wagon driver staying? He finds a wagon driver. He pays the wagon driver for the journey. Grabs his books from the wagon, hires another wagon and leaves the city. Doesn't even stay overnight to sell the books in the city that he only came to in order to sell the books. He paid for the journey to come to sell the books. Doesn't stay, doesn't sell the books. Someone asked him, Rabbi, you only came for this. Why, did, why are you leaving? The rabbi said something unbelievable. He said, the wagon driver forgot somebody. It happens. You don't feel that bad. It happens. He said, but do you think the wagon driver would ever forgive himself if he found out that the passenger he left on the side of the road was the Chafetz Chaim. He says, if I sell the books in town, everyone knows who's this guy, the Chafetz Chaim, including the wagon driver. I can't be party to that embarrassment and that pain that this man's going to feel. I'd rather forgo on the whole city. It gives up the whole business trip. Yani. It gives the stuff, leaves down. The Chafetz Chaim understood the power of someone feeling embarrassment, someone feeling pain, being involved in any way. Was it his fault? Of course not. Was it Rachel's? Of course not. It was not Rachel's fault. But the power of Ben Adam the Havero is the power of a fire. How careful do we have to be when we speak? You know, sometimes you say something. Only recently I had someone came to me very, very hurt. Someone made a comment about the way that they do their job, about how they're inadequate, how they don't do, they don't do a good job. This guy, he wasn't saying it like that. He didn't mean it like that. He was trying to say that they need something else that they need. But how did the guy hear it? You're useless. The hardest part about being a sensitive person is swapping eyes with him because in la dayan ella mashe enavroot a judge only has what his eyes see the kulanu dayanim and my little addition to that would be and we are all judges may Hashem bless us to have those sensitivities to be able to see how other people see us and the way we treat them baruch